Oculus has released a new updated version of their toolkit that now features some pretty cool interaction for both controller and hand tracking on their Oculus Quest headset. With custom and grab, poke, ray, user interface on curved canvas, and pose detection, and so much more. So I have the pleasure to announce a new tutorial series where we will cover everything about it. And in this first episode, we will have a look at the basic setup to use these interactions and use it to make our first object grabbable with both controller and hand tracking. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss the future episode and the source code as well as an exclusive content will be available on my Patreon where you can support this channel. But without further ado, let's get started with our tutorial. Okay, so we're going to need a version of Unity above 2019.4 for this project. As you can see, mine is 2020.3 and I'm using the standard pipeline. So I've already done the Oculus integration and made the VR setup on this project. If you don't know how to do this, it's very simple. You can go to Edit, Project Settings, XR Plugin Management, there click on Install XR Plugin Management and add the Oculus Plugin on both desktop and Android. For the Oculus integration, you can simply download it from this link that you will find in the description. And there you go, everything is now ready. On this scene, I simply have a plane for the ground and this cube that we will use as a table for the object that we will interact with. Now what's left to do for the VR setup is to remove here the default main camera and I'm going to add the camera rig from the Oculus package. So we can search for a VR camera rig, perfect, and then drag it in our scene, make sure its position is at 0, 0, 0. We want to take the eye of the player into account, so I'm going to change the tracking origin type to floor level. Now to interact, we obviously want hands for the player, which is very simple to do with the Oculus integration. We can search on the project window to OVR hand prefab. Drag one under the left hand ensure and one under the right hand ensure. For the one under the right hand, we need to change the hand type on all components to hand right. And there you go. So this is to display hands when using hand tracking. But this will not show when using a controller. So to display the controller in our game, I'm doing the same, but this time for OVR controller prefab. We can drag one under, this time the left controller and shore, and again one under the right controller and shore. Next, in the OVR controller help of the left hand, we want to set the controller type to L touch. Same things go for the one on the right, but this time for R touch. And as you can see, this component will be responsible to display the corresponding controller of the asset that you are using. Okay, so now let's test our game by clicking on play. And here you go. As you can see, when I'm not using my controllers, I am able to see my hands moving with hand tracking. And when I grab my controller, the hand disappears and my quest controller is showing instead. Perfect. Now that our VR setup is done for both and tracking and control, let's move on to do the setup for the interaction toolkit. First, let's search for input of VR. We can drag it in our scene. This is a big prefab that gathers all of the data that we will need to interact with our hands or controller. You can see that it is divided in two children, controller and hands. And for each, a reference to the left or right that have all the information about the data used and the interactor that we have on them. We will learn more about these in the next part of the tutorial, so don't worry for now. But now we can easily set it up by simply dragging our OVR camera rig in the OVR camera rig reference component of the parent. Now, if I click on play, you can see that we have two sets of hands with hand tracking. Oh, but why is that? It's because it seems that on this input of VR prefab, there is already a visual added for the hands. So to fix this, I'm simply going to remove the visual that we added earlier. So we can select both the OVR hand prefab and remove the OVR skeleton renderer, the OVR mesh, 
the OVR Mesh Renderer and the Skin Mesh Renderer. But I will keep here the OVR Hand and the OVR Skeleton because the input OVR Prefab actually use it for the interaction in hand tracking. Okay, here you go. Now, as you can see, everything is ready. We have the input OVR setup and the ends correctly showing. By the way, there is a way to display ends for both end tracking and when using controllers. So if you want me to show you how to do that, let me know in the comment section below and I can make a video about it. Okay, so let's work on our first interaction, a simple grab. We have two things to do, set up the interactor and set up the interactable. For the interactor, let's do first the controller. We can search for controller, grab interactor and drag one under the controller interactor of pose controller like this. Perfect. Now this simply need a reference to the controller. So I'm going to drag the left controller for the left interactor and do the same for the right controller. Oh, and I almost forgot, we need also to add them both to the interactor group list over there. And here you go. Next, let's do the same for the ends, but this time we will need another type of interactor called hand grab interactor. We can drag as before one for each end. Set the reference on the ends for both of them as we did before and add them to the interactor driver list. Okay, here you go guys, so the setup for the interactor is done. Now the next thing to do is to set up the interactable. I'm simply going to add a little cube, we can scale it down and move it above the table and I'm going to set its material to red to make it more noticeable. So there is three base components we need to interact with this cube, a collider that we already have by default, a rigid body, so I'm going to add one, Perfect, and a transformable component. But now it's the important part. We have two types of interactor, one for the controller and one for the end tracking. And if we want the cube to respond to the controller interactor, we can add here a grab interactable. Now for this component, let's drag the rigid body of the cube here. Finally, we can add this interactable component in the list of our transformable. And now if I click on play, as you can see, when I try to grab the cube with hand tracking, it doesn't work, but with the controller, it works, we can grab it. Oh, and by the way, you might notice this field that changed uh, the color when we grab something. And this is simply a little visual tool that you can use. But in my case, I will simply go in our interactor and disable it because I don't want this visual to show. So now let me show you how we can tweak the grabbing to be able to grab with hand tracking as well. So let me first duplicate the cube two times. On the first cube, we will keep the grab interactable, but on the second one, I'm going to remove it and instead add the hand grab interactable. This is the component that will enter the hand tracking grab. We can set the relative to itself and drag the rigid body in the rigid body component. You can see that there is already a lot of cool features on this component. So for example, we can tweak if we can grab when we pinch and with which finger. Same goes for the palm grab. And as we did for the grab controller, we can add the hand grab in the transformable list we have. And last but not least, as you can see, we can choose the snap type to either snap the end to the object or the object to our hand, but in my case, I don't want any offset when I grab, so I'm going to set it to none. And now for the third cube, I'm going to show you how we can interact with both controller and hands, and it's very simple. I'm going to simply have on this cube both a grab interactable and a hand grab interactable. We can set it up exactly as we did for uh, the cube we had before. And there you go, if we did everything correctly, we should be able to grab the first cube with only the controller, the second cube with hand tracking, and the third cube with both. So let's click on play to try this. 
And there you go, guys. As you can see, the result is there. We reach the end of the first part of this tutorial series. With this setup that we just made, there is so much more that we can achieve. So in the next episode, we will have a look at more advanced grabbing technique, like one hand restricted movement, two hand manipulation with killing, and hand pose. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss it. As always, the source code is available on my Patreon, as well as some exclusive content for you to watch over there. So if you'd like to support the channel, join us. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.